All right, Kai, take the intro. No, fuck you. <laughs> no. <laughs> My turn. Uh. Hello and welcome to the official podcast. I am your only host of the official podcast, as you know. This week I have three guests from another podcast that coincidentally is also called the official podcast. We have Rip Rock and Jackson. We have Charging right. Forward Charlie. And we have the Crushinator Kaya. And mm-hmm. boys, I was I was looking over our past episodes and we've hit a great flow and had a lot of things to talk about and had a lot of fun. But I've noticed that we, for many past episodes, have not just gotten to know each other. We've kind of dropped topics and questions where it's like, have you ever done this? What do you think of this? What do you want to do this? So I don't I don't have a jingle for it yet, but I want to start a new corner that we can start the episodes with. That, that's a little more lighthearted, a little more fun. Get us into the mood of talking where I just asked the three of you an open ended question, if that's OK. Boo. These have always turned out well, so I'm excited to hear what this like clone conundrum is. <laughs> what no fan base in half. I don't have a jingle yet. I was going to I was going to steal like some news, like nightly news broadcast music and play it beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Here is my first question for whatever this segment will be called in the future. If you were to be a supervillain, whether fictional or real or however you want to do it, you are a supervillain, you have a moniker and you have a, a you can wear a fucking cape, have a lab, whatever. What would your shtick be? Would you be an evil genius running a bunch of companies? Would you be a super mutant smashing everything? Would you be a dictator? Your choice. What well, would you pick? I would like to be hyper intelligent and rich. So the first one. <laughs> you can you can be anything though. You could be like a giant brain that just floats through space and eats planets. Anything. Oh, I, I, I'd be. Sky's I'd the be limit. The, I'd be the uh, super villain that's just super generous and kind and does really nice things for everyone. <laughs> no matter like what, I'm but, always but just doing be, nice things. You'd be so nice that people would find you annoying and they'd hate you and want to destroy you. Well, no, maybe like by trying to do nice things, I fuck things up even worse. And I'm just like, like someone needs to stop me from doing nice things because I'm tearing the world apart kind of thing. (laughs) That'd be me. That's an adorable little concept. The guy who was so nice, the world turned against him. Yeah, you'd be the guy where the president is like, I need you to take this nuclear launch codes and you got to smuggle them into the underground base. And you're like, you can count on me, Mr. President. But then you accidentally trip and the briefcase opens and like the Russian prime yeah. minister sees it and shit. I feel that like kind of guy. You, we all know that kind of person who always smiles, always looks happy, right? That phony douche. You'd be a super version of that guy, which, I, yeah, I, I think I agree. That would be super annoying. You would be insufferable. Exactly. I actually, yeah, I agree. Self-righteous actually. piece of That's shit. That's a good choice, Jackson. That totally fits you. <laughs> Fit what me? What? <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, now I'm the saddest supervillain out there. <laughs> Being a supervillain's a lonely job, Jackson. <laughs> My friends have already turned on me. <laughs> uh. Uh, I guess sticking with Jack Order, if I'm answering myself, I'd want to be like a, a cult leader. I'd, I'd want to just lead people who would die for me and think that it, I'm just the promised land and salvation and like. I can I can just say like this is the will of a god that loves you and just I bathe in pig blood and I don't know just do a whole bunch of wacky shit and everyone thinks that it's enlightened and next level even though I'm just you're already fucking kind of like people. you're already kind of like growing that aren't you because you're like a Twitch streamer yeah <laughs> and all Twitch streamers are kind of oh, borderline Jackson. like that. Jackson, I cannot yeah. wait for in about three years down the road when I weaponize and militarize my viewing audience. It's gonna be great. I, I wonder what I'll storm first with them. Probably like a Dairy Queen or something. Yeah, ask for free <laughs> sauce. Thinking small. <laughs> I'm still taking the fucking pedophile island. I got my name you written all it. over it. Well, yeah. well, well, wait, wait, wait. Back to back to Andrew though. How's it, how's it a superpower? How would that no, be? A super no, no, villain, no, no, no. I, I said just if you were a supervillain, just of any kind. What would you? What would your well, shtick be? If you're a super, that's just a normal villain, though. If you're a super villain, that implies that you have some form of superpower, right? Super can imply yeah, that he yeah. just has a disproportionate hold on the world. All right, all right. Effect. So what I, yeah, what I would probably go in with that then is I'd be like a hypnotist. So if anyone ever like listened to my <laughs> sermons or I got them alone, I could just brainwash them into doing what I wanted, and that's you're, how the cult would form. You're jigglypuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> how about you, all Charlie? Right. 
Um, fuck, I don't know. I was going to go with Twitch streamer, but you kind of already encompassed that with your cult leader. <laughs> so now I need to rethink my answer. Can we go to Kaya instead, who's taking over Pedophile Island? Uh, well, that wouldn't be mine. I think about this a lot. Like, what could I do to fuck the planet? But I, I like to keep it realistic. <laughs> I like to think, okay, so if I was as rich as Jeff Bezos, I thought about this a lot. How could I do the most damage to the planet with as little, <laughs> like, realistic effort? Not some Marvel suit. I'm never going to have a fucking spaceship shoot space lasers like the Death Star at the Earth. So... But if I, you know, if I had a two hundred billion dollars or whatever the fuck he's at now, I'm sure I could bribe some country like Iran or North Korea to s give me a nuclear warhead, right? At least sell me one. And so I'm thinking, where could I smuggle that one nuclear warhead to cause the most damage? And I'm not thinking a major city because that's kind of boring. Yeah, sure, there's millions of people who would instantly evaporate. But how can I cause long-term damage? Like, could I? bury this thing in a volcano and could that cause like a chain reaction of volcanoes <laughs> could i set it off in the mariana's trench and cause a tsunami worldwide could i blow up the ice caps what if i put it on the moon and blew it up would it cause asteroids landing on earth how can i one nuke that's my challenge to myself. The the one <laughs> nuke challenge. <laughs> that sounds like it would be a fun game. Some yeah, kind of really. like video game based around the idea of doing as much damage as you can with one nuclear <laughs> warhead. I, I know. That would be a really fucking cool idea. That is cool. I mean, it wouldn't be cool to do it, Kyo. I, I just want to draw my line in the sand right now. Please don't. So, so <laughs> sure. stepping away from your actual in-depth genocidal fantasies, what would you be like as a super villain? <laughs> That's not super enough He'd for be you. Rich. Well, what yeah, else do you want? Well, well, no. I meant, I meant how the guy said that it's I would have tame. to be like a like a mind control guy. What would your What would your whole nuke plan give you in terms of being a superhero or a super villain, a superhuman? I honestly don't know. I'm kind of content just being filthy rich enough to buy a nuclear <laughs> war. <laughs> just, <laughs> your, your superpower is having enough money to buy a nuke. <laughs> That's Batman, isn't it? Batman's just rich. I guess he, he was fair. trained by, what's his name? The uh, assassin dude. Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. Even he's, he, he's like 1% as rich as Jeff Bezos, I think, even canonically, right? Uh, Batman. I don't know, actually. Come on, he has like what, one point something billion or five billion or something? Meanwhile, Jeff Ew, Bezos is enough. What? I think yeah. so. Isn't according, it? Uh, according to a, a quick, reliable Google, Bruce Wayne's net worth is roughly nine to twelve billion dollars. Oh, okay. Mm, but perhaps the economy in Gotham is different. Maybe they use a different currency. We don't know. Well, yeah, it could be Bitcoin, I guess. But I don't well, know. I just other googled thing with. Um, I looked up Scrooge Good. McDuck net worth, and he only has one point eight oh, well, billion. Scrooge. <laughs> yeah. So here's here's the thing, though, with uh, with Bruce Wayne as well. He's constantly refunneling his money into his businesses. Like every time he does a a new Batmobile or something, part of that money goes to researching a new car made by Wayne Cars or uh, whatever. That's what Jeff it's does not, too. Yeah. He has fucking drones delivering packages and shit. But I'm talking if he liquidated everything. Which isn't even possible. There literally is enough cash on the planet to pay this man's <laughs> shares. <laughs> but I'm just saying, he could. I don't know. If I was in his place, I could go over to Kim Jong Il or whatever that fat fuck's called and tell him, "Hey, I'll give you some Amazon coupons, just like I paid off those guys when I was buying their URL dot Amazon." And say, "Hey, uh, you know, you have some warheads, right? Come on, you can tell me. I'll keep it a secret. Let's just transport this to a." tactical spot on earth and maybe you get shelter <laughs> if you're nice to me tactical spot i like that terminology <laughs> well what would happen theoretically if jeff bezos just decided hey you know what amazon's been good to me but i'm just kind of over it and then he just shuts the doors and closes amazon and everything like that would, would that have some kind of impact on the economy oh 100%. <laughs> would it like, have it's so, it's so, yeah i think large. so jackson the biggest company i mean on jackson the let's uh, let's put it into perspective here jeff bezos has about 160 billion dollar net worth that's about <laughs> Jesus. more Shit. that's that's more than one and a half times bill gates the former <laughs> highest net worth so think about it this way if the man who runs all that that's how much money he has and is still making more think how widespread the the economic influence of amazon is 
and Twitch yeah, and so all what their would subsidiaries. Happen? What would happen if he said no more? No more. I've had enough. Amazon's closed. I, I wouldn't get my body pillow I ordered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd cry. They have, they have to send I'd you a whine. refund. I wouldn't get my damn fly swatter. I don't know. I, f- I feel like America especially would just turn into Venezuela with people hunting for dogs to eat. What the fuck else would you do? <laughs> Play RuneScape for money. Yeah. I think the way that Am- America would work, though, is some other big company would take its place. Like, I, I, I don't know who, but I don't know. Maybe Microsoft goes, we made our own Amazon store now. And then Microsoft just becomes the new Amazon. It's just yeah, kind of how the think economy about just, works. Just the general, like, job displacement. How many people would lose jobs? And uh, yeah. it must have some kind of, like, and socioeconomic. Stock. Just Yeah. Yeah. Then a bunch of like uh, Madison Street people throw themselves off of rooftops when that uh, economic collapse happened. I feel I feel like there would be a whole lot of suicides if Jeff Bezos just went, eh, fuck it, I'm selling Amazon to the Russians. Oh, absolute, <laughs> absolutely, for two nickels. <laughs> ah, absolutely, if Amazon shut down, there there'd be bodies in the fucking streets. Absolutely, <laughs> guaranteed. Couldn't even order a body bag anymore. It would be a disaster. <laughs> Isn't that a fun idea, though? I feel like my I feel like my villainry is the most realistic out of the four of us. Even though I, yeah, we still have to hear uh, Charlie's. Actually, you go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of anything to one up it, but I really don't think there is. You okay, don't have so to one up it. Like, I'm not looking to dominate the world with my thing. I just want to have like a tiny personal army that thinks I'm like the son of God and all that shit. Yeah, but what's the point if I can't beat Kaya's nuclear warhead? I, okay, I got it. I have enough money for two nukes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not... See, that's not fair anymore. That's not even a challenge. <laughs> that's why I'm the supervillain. I don't play fair. Ah, uh, fuck you. Oh, he's got you there. <laughs> I think, see... Charlie's the supervillain of creativity. Mine is still more <laughs> realistic, technically speaking, because it's easier to smuggle one nuke around the globe from border to border. So what I think we should do, and I'm when I see we, I'm including every listener here, move to... Help me, right? It's the most short-term, doable goal, achievable one. <laughs> the most realistic. So go over to patreon.com slash the official podcast and let's make this a reality, guys. We can do it. Ooh. We can nuke Mariana's trench. Ooh, I have an that idea. I have an trench. idea. I have a legitimate idea. We update the Patreon page after this episode. We can look up how much a nuke costs and we make that the new <laughs> Patreon goal. Crowdfunded. I don't think you could just buy a nuke. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll have enough money by that point to do it. I'll, I'll try and look for an eBay link and we can go from there. <laughs> Kim Jong Un would have done it ages ago if that had been the case. Well, Who's to say he, he doesn't make have an the go knowledge? Didn't, wasn't he developing something and then oh, he yeah. blew he up d- his He just needs to make a Patreon. It's, it's hilariously incompetent how f- much of failures their space and nuclear weapons and all that shit programs are. They're, they're just not should've even close. Patreon. Yeah, they should have had a crowdsource for... They, there needs to be a crowdsource on Kickstarter and it's like, help make North Korea a great country. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, That's yeah. a little far, Andrew. So I just Googled it. I don't know if this is like the sum for all warheads in the US, but this says... Finally, B-61 and B-83 bombs will be delivered by B-2 bombers, the so-called stealth bomber. It costs some 80 billion to develop and build 21 of these planes, or 4 billion per B-2 bomber. Blah blah blah. Well, that's a uh, that's the that's the plane that drops the missiles. All yeah, we need is the missile. This is broken down, and it has these. <laughs> are you gonna carry? Are you gonna carry the nuke? There? I'm, gonna, Andrew, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get my cult followers to put it on their shoulders, and we're just gonna run really <laughs> fast and throw it. See, that's what I was thinking. So, Andrew, and you and I can work together. You get your fervent followers, like ISIS members. You put, you know, except of a, instead of a explosive vest, that's a nuclear device in a backpack. <laughs> but this says, what does it all add up to? Assuming that the DOE and DOD plans move forward and the United States makes further modest reductions in its deployed and reserve arsenal to a total of 3,000 weapons, the United States will spend some $250 billion on new nuclear warheads. See, I don't need 3,000, though. I just need one. So what is 250 divided by 3,000? Uh, like $50. 50 I'm not the supervillain of math. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Char- uh, speaking of Charlie, do you have a do you have an idea yet? You come up with something? Yeah, I buy two nukes. 
Go, don't be a I fucking you. pussy. I don't Come on. know. Come on. I can't Come on. think of anything that's even you comparable. I can't even think of a good It doesn't do. need to be comparable. Yeah, Charlie, I, I put no restrictions on this. You could literally be the intergalactic wrestling champion, and every time you win in Plus the, it's been, in the it's planetary fight... It's meant to say fight. something about you. It's not meant to be a yeah. competition. It's meant to say something about who you are. That's well, the it whole says point that I'm competitive. Charlie, corner. Charlie, say you have a new superpower every time you wake up and you're an intergalactic carpet cleaner. Oh yeah, that's what I'd want. Well, he's not a super villain though, but I'd want to. I'd want to be. <laughs> I'd want to be Shock Rock fan. <laughs> Who is that, Charlie? Tell me more. I'm glad you ask. I'm glad you asked, Kai. He's the star of an up-and-coming cartoon series developed in-house here called Hard Turbo. <laughs> Do we want to break this news, which is not news, and we're going to get turned down anyway, do you but <laughs> why not? <laughs> do you want to do the ad first, and then we'll do we'll, we'll change topics? Yeah, since yeah it's, I'll, do, okay. I'll do the ad. So, coming this summer is a cartoon <laughs> series. <laughs> <laughs> our very in own in Shock our, Rock Vane. He likes to wear MVMT <laughs> watches, because MVMT watches, they can resist anything. A nuclear solar flare... Orbital slingshot into a volcano. These watches are practically... I don't actually think I can say that legally. <laughs> I was going to say indestructible. <laughs> yeah, you definitely can't say that. Okay, Andrew, do you want to take this in a direction that won't get us sued? You guys shouldn't have to choose between overpriced designer sunglasses and cheap shades that won't last you summer. And that's why if I were a supervillain... I think maybe I'd use some of my power and influence to get all my followers to come together and find to me the greatest sunglasses in the land. But I wouldn't even have to use those powers because I could look out and go, oh, look, movement. There they are. Done. Found them. You've heard us all talk about movement completely shaking up the watch industry. And now they're doing it again with sunglasses. The constructed, these are constructed with durable acetate and lightweight materials for a perfect reliable fit and you don't have to choose between style and function with movement sunglasses you get both if you want to pick a style there you can go to their website they have uh, honestly like i think 40 different styles to choose from they have a bunch they have a whole heck of a lot different tints colors shades shapes whatever your face looks like you will find sunglasses for it period movement sunglasses start at 60 dollars, and there are no sunglasses over 95 dollars. meaning that if you want to look into some men's fashion, start looking handsome. You don't have to break the bank. Over 2.5 million sold, over 160 countries. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash official. See why movement keeps growing and check out their expanded collection. That's mvmt.com slash official. Join the movement. Join Remember the movement. when we used to do movie titles for the letters? That was, yeah. It got hard, that was though. Nice it got really hard. Stands for... We could try. Oh, it's turbo. Nice <laughs> mm. I don't do think it. Kai knows how to spell. <laughs> I know how to spell. Do, do I want to make money. <laughs> to the avid listeners of the podcast, you'll know that Hard Turbo was a cartoon. Is a cartoon series. It's not done yet. <laughs> Let's, say I, yes. Let's just say was. Let's just say was. That Kai and I were <laughs> were spitballing on for the better part of the last like three years, and then we got in talks with. Well, in talks is very generous. We we threw balls of it at Netflix. It went up the pipeline, and we never heard back. And it became kind of <laughs> like a little meme that we'll never hear back from Netflix. It's dead. They've killed our baby. The whole nine. And then today, we got news that we're moving forward, so now we need to do a lot of work within a week <laughs> to have it ready for the executive board at Netflix to see if we're going to get it on the, the, the platform or not. Yeah, so basically we heard back from Netflix, some some suit at Netflix telling us, yes, we need you to turn in this 5,000 word essay until Friday, so we're feeling like we're right back in college. We need art. Yeah. We need a storyboard. We need a story. We need a script. You haven't done any of this over the last three years. Oh, fuck you. So this has just been for three years. Yeah. yeah, Jesus. Whose side are you How on? First of all, I mean, it's been dead. No one has encouraged us to do this over the last three years. All we've ever <laughs> heard back is. Oh, fuck off. No, okay. You I, I be meant doing nobody who matters. Anyway. Nobody who matters has <laughs> ever told us this should be ready. <laughs> Okay, so we've just been sitting on this idea. Now we have to cram before exam night, which is going to be embarrassing and we're going to fuck up. I'm surprised you guys just don't have anything, like no concept. Well, no, 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 okay, hold, hold on, hold on. We have a Bible. We have a theme song. We have uh, some artwork, but we don't have. So the guy who's presenting it on our behalf, 
has already gotten a show approved on there. And the thing they presented at this stage was an over a hundred page script for the entire show's season one. Uh, yeah, pages well, that's what upon, you meant to have. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, we didn't have that heads up because we didn't get any <laughs> feedback. <from laughs> no, no, no. The whole, the whole, the whole way that you pitch a TV show isn't just, oh, here's my idea. You have to go, well, here's how the yeah. whole thing goes. Here's, here's the, the story. Here's the story. The story boards, here's no, what we know yeah. that, but here's at the no characters. Point. Right, but at no point did we reach the threshold of where where they said, "Okay, we're gonna. This is the next step. The next step is you exactly. present this to us." They simply told us today, I guess, that oh, until Friday, yeah, we're gonna need it all. Yeah, exactly. So now we're in a hot, hot crunch time. For all we knew, for the last like six months, it's been there. They've just been wiping their ass with it and spitting on it. So how <laughs> would we know that we needed to like prepare, like get our makeup on I, for if, it? If anything, I feel like you just did the absolute minimal effort for this show and then expected them to green light it. <laughs> okay, this is not the response I was hoping was for. I don't, get done. I don't fucking know if you work for Netflix, whose side you're on, but I want hashtag heart turbo on Netflix trending. <laughs> Wait, on Netflix trending? So people watching their shows at home will type on their no, no, remote no, no, no. hashtag no, heart turbo. Is, heart turbo on Netflix. Even, mm. even if it's greenlit, though, it doesn't sound like it's ever going to get made because you guys don't know what you're doing. Exactly. Oh, no, it'll, it'll be made if Whoa. I get paid. I'll I'll make the shit out of it. You're kidding me. All right. So hey. what's the what's the story arc for season one here? What ch what do the characters go through? I'm not gonna give you a that's spoiler. Confidential. Yeah. What the yeah. Fuck? <laughs> that's confidential. That's confidential. Yeah, confidential because he's writing it as he goes along. <laughs> yeah. The dumbest not. thing I've ever heard. We've had we've had it set in stone for <laughs> for years now. We 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 have, and every week we change the story. But that's beside the point. The point is we don't know. We we change more than the story. We change the entire <laughs> core of what the show is about today. <laughs> the concept. premise. Yeah, we did. We sat there for yeah. another two hours going. You know what? We have until this point isn't bad but hmm let's just change it all <laughs> <laughs> so we did <laughs> every time we think it's better i don't know tomorrow morning we're gonna make up thinking ah, this sucks <laughs> let's try how, yeah. how would you guys feel how would you guys feel if netflix they looked over what you finally give them after this week and they go you know we were really looking for and then they just line for line describe your very first original idea i'll pull up the old document and be like i read your mind <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Next, you're going to say you wanted this on there, and then bang, I've got the whole script ready. You have your finger on my pulse, sir. So apparently there's also this thing where Netflix will now, they ran the numbers, they did the analytics and metrics, they will, as a business decision, cancel shows after two seasons, even if they're popular, because it doesn't make sense for them to fund a show past two seasons. Two seasons is apparently enough Makes to just get to people on the platform to get new subscribers and all that. I just want to sell two seasons. Oh, man. wait, even if they're successful? Yeah. yeah. Even if they're successful, they cancel the, it? The idea is that they get people to sign up for Netflix and then they have that one show, but then they get so satisfied with the platform as a whole, there's no reason to keep that show going. It's not hooking well, them anymore. I, I guess unless it is extremely successful, like Stranger Things. Like Stranger Things. Yeah, 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 yeah stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I just, I don't know. Heart Turbo does not have to be Stranger Things tier, but I think we can squeeze out a little Dear White People kind of money out of it, right? Netflix, come on. Uh, hashtag Heart Turbo on Netflix. <laughs> on, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, if, that, if that's a sign of what your pitch is going to be like, I'm fucking worried. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just the entirety of the pitch. He goes in birthing and saying hashtag Heart Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> With a backwards baseball cap. <laughs> oh god, I want I want it to be like a middle school presentation where Charlie just all shaking and sweating in his fucking little cargo shorts and his backwards hat goes into the board meeting room and goes, Hi, I'm I'm here for uh, uh hard turb Charlie oh uh, uh I'm, that's exactly what I'm expecting. Well, I think, it's a, is, I think yeah, it's a good idea. Do that. If we get a good team to produce it not produce it, but like uh, you know, animation. I think our story is good. Because especially when I watch all the other shit out there, uh, One Punch Man, season two, is ass. I feel like Charlie and I could have done a much better job. more, Much more fighting, much less talking. I'd, so Charlie and I were thinking maybe we could get some famous YouTubers on board to do voice acting. But at this point I'm thinking, do we even do need voice acting? Because I'd <laughs> let's just have an intro and fights. Make it progressive. <laughs> Make it all like sign language. 
<laughs> a black and white silent movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the revolution of the cartoon. There is no voice acting. It's yeah, all we just pantomime. <laughs> we take it back to its bare bones where it's a flip it's, book and every a camcorder of my hands. Every episode's just a music video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just AMVs nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to piece the story together yourself from the description of the episode. Just evanescence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all, all kidding aside, I'm very excited and happy for you guys. I, I just think you also have a dick load of stuff to do in a week. Yeah. So, yeah, when, when, oh, it's two in a week? Yeah. There's no yeah, way that you yeah, good, be good to make enough That's, art yeah. in general. At this, point, be, at this point, at this point, it's we, we're going to be able to at least storyboard an episode, like a script storyboard of a single episode. But at this I point, I don't even think that's possible. No, we, okay. we, we can definitely bang that out. But at this point, it's just going to fly by by the concept. It's going to sink or swim if they like the concept enough. Yeah. Do I, you do you have, do you you have, you have a short you, summary of the concept concept right now? That you you'll can have to stay on? tuned to Netflix hashtag Hard Turbo on Netflix. Yeah, you, how do I know? Streams will release it. You how said do I know? you, you won't Bible, take our idea today. Right? You said you have a Bible, right? Yeah, because I'm too nice. Does yeah, that have nice uh, cool. does that have all the illustrations for the show and the concept art? It has. Mm, I have it all there. Yeah. Fifteen oh, lines. Okay. No, it has more. Than <laughs> okay, because. <laughs> Because here's the here's the thing the big the big thing especially with cartoons is you want to show people what it's gonna look like and how it's gonna be animated and if you don't have that for your show which it sounds like you don't that's gonna be a hard push. What do you have for the show? Uh, you'll have to wait and see uh, once it trends <laughs> on. I'm not Twitter. in the boardroom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You know what? Well, let's, let's, hear anything. Here, let's do let's do a little role play, a little quick role play. Jackson and I will be actual executive board members at Netflix, <laughs> and you two have just walked in. And pretend you have all your materials. All of them are ready to go. We have your book, your Bible, your storyboards. Pitch us the show. Yeah, pretend. Go. Okay, so can we role play that Notch is also in the room? Uh. We'll, we'll settle. We'll settle for Jack guy. Sean is in the room. No, he isn't rich. Fuck him. I want. Yeah, not, he is. Well, not rich enough to fund this by himself. How about this? Everyone tweet Heart Turbo on Netflix, please. At Notch. <laughs> <laughs> Make him pay for it. The more you guys just talk about this, the less it. I think you have a cartoon, and the more I think you're just using a money making scheme. <laughs> All right, That's fine, what fine. All right, back to the role play. Cue me in, Andrew. All right, uh, okay, Jackson, that, that last cartoon, uh, Dogs Fucking Dogs, that looks okay, but uh, I think next we have I, uh, Kea and Charlie from Hard Turbo. How are you guys doing? Uh, hi, Mr. Netflix. Uh, I'm Charlie on behalf of Hard Turbo. Our show is a cartoon. It revolves around a man who was framed for a crime he didn't commit. Now he's hunted by his government, and he's assembling a team. An A team, if you will. And then I play the theme song that we've constructed. <laughs> I don't have it on cue if you're waiting for a soundboard. Yeah, I, was waiting, I was waiting for your soundboard. <laughs> now, 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 okay, that was, a, that was a pretty good start. I do have some notes, though. Uh, number one, don't just flat out copy the A team. That's probably not a good idea. Unless that's your angle. Is Hard Turbo just a rip off of the A team? It's not even close. It's just, uh, it's confident. I already signed an NDA, uh, so I can't, I literally can't talk about it. <laughs> All right, uh, my question, how many naked children are in this cartoon? Oh, how that's right. How many do you want? We got we to hit the big mouth numbers, guys. Big mouth's very popular. Season three. Yeah, well, we're about to renew season three for big mouth. So if you can take that spot, we're more than willing to fund you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for a few, it, if actually, you can put a we'll few pay, naked kids in there. We'll, we'll pay you to take big mouth off of our programming list. <laughs> <laughs> All our, all our anime just burnt down, so we need new hentai. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about Big Mouth. <laughs> Fuck that that's show. That's a good question. God, that's a, that's a good <laughs> question, Kaya. Would you, would you tank Hard Turbo's quality for the sake of replacing Big Mouth? Like Tor in the same Tor style as Big Ooh. Mouth, the same... Yeah, you, that's a uh, that's a good question. So let's <laughs> let's say you guys could get rid of Big Mouth, but in order to do that to crank out your show fast enough, the art had to look kind of shitty and it had to be basically animated and all that shit. Would you do naked it? Kids, How yeah. dare you? That six year old's pussy looked great. <laughs> I'm gonna click on that. that. <laughs> <laughs> that's making the soundboard. <laughs> it's making drama alert right there. <laughs> oh. Please tell me that's an actual thing in Big Mouth. 
Oh, there's an entire yeah. song with just children vaginas Na- and yeah. tits. Yeah, okay, there's a whole naked talked about women's this. song, and half the characters are kids. Yeah, Jackson, yeah. this, yeah, this yeah, show is about. Then I, then I thought maybe you were lying, and now I'm just gonna look like a Jackson. Well, how many fucking times do we have to say this one. when Charlie and I talk about the show? None of what we said is exaggerated or lying. It's that terrible. Yeah. It, it's a bad show. It's about prepubescent children, Jackson. Literally little I just, six-year-olds. I, I just don't understand how they could get away with that. He was just uh, complimenting her vagina, Kaya. I, I don't know. It's fuck. I don't know. I have no idea how they're getting away with it. Would I replace it? Yeah, if I could get that show canceled and get paid, yes. I don't see the downside well, here. No, 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 no. You're misunderstanding. You'd have to change Hard Turbo to be about naked children and prepubescent shit. You'd uh, have to become Big yeah. Mouth V2. Yeah. Would you consume the no. demon to kill the demon? Well, then yeah, I, I didn't think kill I the either. demon. I just replaced it. How is that killing the demon? Because then it's called Hard Turbo and you're running the show. How? Well, it's, it's still it's, a replacement. It still has naked children. How's that? Re- yeah, let me replace child porn with child porn. Well, how does that work? You know, the, mo- fire with the fire. more <laughs> the more that I think about it, making a show that has naked children in it called Hard Turbo is probably a bad idea. <laughs> well, Big Mouth is a pretty weird name as well when it's a show based around vaginas or whatever. That's, Why is it called Big Mouth? Actually, I, I don't want to know. <laughs> Because <laughs> vaginas kind of look like big mouths, I guess. I don't know. I watched it's one clip of vaginas. it that they themselves posted on their own Twitter account, and it was about some six-year-old's nipples. I don't want to know. I don't care. That show is creepy. I don't know who, who the fuck greenlit it. Hashtag Heart Turbo on Netflix, man. You gotta step up your act here, Netflix. Yeah, I agree. Do you agree, Andrew? I agree on a lot of things, man. But, like, I, I just... <sighs> Guys, I'm sorry. We we have to we have to take a step back. We have to get really serious here. I just I really want to open mindedly agree and let you guys know what I think of it. But I just my, I've been distracted all episode from all the money I've saved with honey. You know, <laughs> I, nice. I know. Yeah, I fine. I'm Go sorry. ahead and run I'm your vi- big mouth about it. Oh, I will. Honey is. I, I want to call it honey because I just feel such love and affection towards it. I, I open my computer, my web browser, and I look at the corner and there's that little honey icon, a little extension. And I go, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for being in, in my life. Thank you for being such a strong rock in these trying times. Honey is a free browser extension that searches the Internet for coupon codes and automatically applies them to your cart in ch- at checkout. It works with Amazon and who knows how many other vendors online? I've I've shopped for clothes. I've shopped for food delivery. I've shopped for the most out there stuff. And Honey will just, it'll walk right up to the corner and just poke its head out and go, Hey, man. Hey. Hey, uh, you, know, you want to apply that little code? You want to save a little money? And of course I do. Simply put, if there is a better price, Honey will find it for you in seconds. I bought some studio lights on Amazon legitimately, I don't know, like a week ago save 20 bucks with honey just by doing nothing nothing boys what'd you save with honey i mean i wasn't kidding i bought a body pillow i I don't remember how much i saved on it but i did save a little i'm constantly saving with honey so i don't know i I save a lot with honey there honey's great excellent and you can add honey for free in just two clicks it's that easy start saving today on amazon prime day on every day for that matter Add Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L. Honey Online Savings Simplified. And now we can move on. All right. Tweet, uh, hashtag Heart Turbo on Netflix at Honey. <laughs> <laughs> just every corporation. Just let everyone know what's coming. <laughs> Please, God, one of you fund this. I want a movement, man. I want I want to recreate the Coney 2012 movement, except it's us getting on Netflix. And it'll mm. actually happen. Unlike Coney, who's if still... If each company puts in like $1,000, that's like barely anything for these mega corporations, then you might be able to fund it that way. That'd be pretty cool. But then you'd have to advertise all these giant corporations in your anime shit. We can yeah. make them wear a blue apron. 
That's fine by me. Ooh. That's actually not a terrible idea. You could do it like big movies where it's like Transformers. Everyone's drinking Coke and driving Chevrolets. You could yeah. have Hard Turbo like every episode. He goes, boy, do I love a tasty Sprite. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could write that. That could in. be his catchphrase. Exactly. pay a million dollars. Perfect. Now we just have to get Coca-Cola on board. That actually that should could be an easy one. That actually could easily be your pitch. Just be like, listen, guys, Netflix. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, yeah. No, they'd, st they'd still want to see your Bible and storyboards. Yeah. And you're in the exact same situation. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be two bums walking into their office. One guy looking like a hippie. The other one is an alcoholic smelling. <laughs> <laughs> we could, um... You, that could actually be your entire pitch. Just go to Netflix and say, guys, listen, we are willing to work in any and all advertisements. Our script can completely revolve around brands. We don't care. Just because it doesn't show. exist yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are soulless. <laughs> I can already see it right now. Working in the universe, Coke spills on the floor. And that's the whole plot for the episode, cleaning it. <gasps> mm. you, almost leaked the, you almost leaked his profession, Charlie. Don't. We didn't discuss this. <laughs> He's a coke salesman. This is a violation of your NDA. Uh, uh, Pepsi's going to not like this one. <laughs> Conflict of interest incoming. Uh, okay, let's change the season two ads. <laughs> let's change the topic here. Hashtag Hard Turbo on Netflix, just for everyone out there. Charlie, do you have any response to the leg dilemma here? Because ever since last week, our subreddit has become posts like... I don't know, along the lines before oh, last let's, episode. Let's just no, tell call since it what it last is. It's week. Been, it's been ruined. It's been ruined by leg photos. Ruins? I love it. It's, it's <laughs> nothing but it. photos along the lines of, uh, I'm a 12-year-old anorexic chick with leukemia, and even I have beefier legs than you, Charlie. Uh, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps ruined... Perhaps ruined was the worst, the strongest word. I didn't mean ruined as a bad thing. I just mean it has become, it, it should be about leg <laughs> photos by this point, not even about the show. <laughs> but I, I do also cool. love the leg photos. Charlie? Yeah, I think I, I think I proved my point. Everyone's legs on there were super skinny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I think some of them look real good. Some guy posted one that was really vascular and <laughs> thick and... I don't know, yeah, Charlie. that one was photoshopped. Ah. You know, you're not doing yourself mm -hmm. any favors. I checked out some of the screenshots of your latest video where you're sitting in some chair or something and the aspect ratio is way off. I don't know why you keep <laughs> rendering your videos all fucked up. Where <laughs> it's just so unflattering, it's going to perpetuate the myth that you're basically a salt stick. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. <laughs> Andrew sees them in person. He, what do you think of my legs, Andrew? I think you're terrible at filmography because somehow you just give yourself the nastiest goblin legs whenever you make a video. <laughs> <laughs> like in person, they look perfectly fine. And then you make these videos and I'm like, Jesus, what muscular degeneration did you go through between now and then? I don't know how you do it. It's impressive. <laughs> but yeah, they look fine know. in person. Yeah, I don't really know, to be honest, at this point. Are you, oh. are you sick and tired of all the, of all the photos, Charlie? His confidence is melting. Have you guys heard I that? Know. No, my legs... No, my legs are, like, really muscular, actually. <laughs> it's just, well, that, that's now not you're what the question was. Like, my calf well, is like a goddamn... Giant uh, ham. In, in real, <laughs> all right, look, look, looking with my own unfiltered eyeballs in person, your legs are fine. They are average. They are they are human legs. Yep, nothing going on there. But then you just put a camera on them, and all of a sudden you've got you've got fucking jaundice or muscle deprivation, <laughs> or you you're dehydrated or something. I don't know. It's Is just there like uh, you know, that's not my question. My question to Charlie is, how does he feel knowing that everyone is negatively talking about his legs on the internet at the moment? Does it hurt? Uh, I, it could be worse, I guess. It's just, I don't know, just my legs yeah. at that point. It's Do not you that feel big like you can now identify with hot chicks in Hollywood when people talk about how flat they are, how they have flat asses? Yeah. yeah. Do you oh, feel absolutely. objectified? A little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Mm. Can we turn this into a That's body a positivity point. movement? Yeah. Charlie, I think you'll recover from your leg disease, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty standards are a cultural invention. What, what do they always say? The the fat chicks? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder? No, the beauty standards are a, <laughs> are a cultural something. Fuck, what, what is that shit? I'm blanking right now. Invention. 
Fuck, uh, motherfucker! Oh, Why is oh, nobody in the oh, chat? Beauty, beauty, beauty is a social construct. Yes, social construct. I couldn't think of that That's the term. One. Thank you. Yeah, maybe thick calves are a social construct, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, back in the back in the day, our uh, our terms of what was beautiful and all that were flipped all sorts of way. The fucking Michelangelo's David has the tiny little penis because back then they thought <laughs> tiny penises were really flattering. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, so maybe maybe Charlie's ahead of the curve. Maybe in a hundred years, really skinny and twig-like legs are going to be just all the rage. I can try and bring back the old stuff with like tiny dicks. That change? I don't know, but I, don't know. I, I just definitely remember that in high society back then, everyone was like, oh, look at that tiny little cute wiener. That just means that he's so posh and proper and well <laughs> groomed and I'm dead maybe, serious. Maybe that's what because it women strong. weren't weren't used to having orgasms back then. They didn't <laughs> associate that with having giant cocks or whatever. But then once females started having orgasms, they started uh, like you know, big dicks started becoming a pioneer you know, woman. Jackson, like, wait a minute, a thick cock is nicer. This feels well, much here's, better. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing. Then she here's, was stoned. <laughs> I think Jackson's kind of onto something. I think if you look at the rise of pornography. When people were able to go look at these literal thousands of dicks I can view in one second, they started to go, oh, I think we all want the bigger ones, the big me meaty masculine ones, the really intimidating people ones. Don't like, people pe like guys jerking off to porn, which is like the main pornographic audience, don't like looking at big cocks. Yeah, but they as like watching I women get feel. fucked by big cocks. You know what I mean? No, because then I can't put myself there, Andrew. <laughs> I only watch actors with tiny wieners. Yeah. Jackson specific has like the longest list of search terms for porn. He puts Australian between 20 and 25, <laughs> white pale skin, <laughs> medium dick, this tall, this kind of woman, just so he can imagine it perfectly. I've yet to find a video. <laughs> that, One day uh, Jackson's holy grail will be found. That's a good transition for me. So, Andrew, you wanted to move to Japan, not move, but visit at least. V right? Visit, yeah. Definitely yeah. vacation so, and visit, yeah. So Japan has a population problem. Apparently there's more people dying now of old age or other problems than there are people born. And so this article yeah. that I found on Business Insider, it says, In Japan, sex is translated as relationship in flesh. So I named those boys herbivorous boys since they are not interested in flesh. This is about basically voluntary uh, celibate men. They don't want sex anymore. Apparently, mm -hmm. herbiv yeah. herbivores are increasingly present in Japan. According to 2015 survey of 1,000 people, blah, blah, blah. Guys who just aren't interested in sex. And there are these all these goofy-ass terms. So I'm going to try... Actually, Andrew, do you want to try pronouncing these? So I know of one. There's a, there's a phenomenon in Japan that I think is actually really interesting to look at. I think it's called hikikumori which is the fact that there are just people out there that just completely reject society and don't want to be a part of it because it's too hard or they, they get anxious over it or they don't the want to do it. The shut-ins? So, yeah, they live their entire life in one room and, and they just never leave their apartment. They always just sit in there. They're either playing games or reading manga or anything. And that's kind of part of that group where there's just this big group of men that go, oh, you know, dating, it's just, why put in the effort? Why even try? Like... You know, fuck getting women and who cares when I can just jack off to hentai and play video games. It's so much easier. And that that's a big thing in Japan. It is. So apparently this is about yeah. how these guys have so much work time now on their hands that they just can't go to cafes and dates and shit. I'll try reading this, I, I guess, unless you want to click the link I just put in our group chat, Andrew. Uh, yeah, Japan Times it. blogger Rebecca Milner supplies a taxonomy. Nikushoki Keidanshi. Also, in English, <laughs> forgive no, I'm, my I'm Japanese. Just laughing. I, I want someone to remix your voice into like an anime intro. <laughs> this stands for carnivore guys. Classic macho guys who go after what and who they want. Sushoku oh, yeah, Keidanshi. Yeah. Sure. Sushoku Keidanshi. Herbivore guys. Shy guys who don't make a move. Pray for the growing number of Nikushuku... Nik, nik, Ni uh, before I say the n-word here, Andrew, can you just read it? Yeah. <laughs> Niku Shokuke Jose. <laughs> I'm gonna have a slip up and lose our sponsors. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> In the saddest way possible, talking about Japanese terms. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean... If I can give you a little so, help, I don't know, just a quick rundown Japanese because I'm actually in the middle of learning it. The fun thing about Japanese is for the most part, every letter is always pronounced the same. 
It's not like read and red where <laughs> Andrew, you, know, you can have the same letters. So if you learn how to read the letters, you can w- read any word. Okay, Mr. So don't Brainiac, we don't need the play-by-play. Just read the <laughs> list. <laughs> All right. We're talking about well, sex. I'm still, yeah. still going to bastardize it because I'm not good at it, but good. I can try. All right. So Niku Shoku Ke Danshi, which is the carnivore. carnivore. Uh, so Shoku Ke <laughs> you Danshi. You fucked up the English word. Right? <laughs> 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 you, you pronounced the Japanese word perfectly and then fucked up the first English my word. My weakness knows no <laughs> bounds. I'm growing stronger every day. <laughs> Wait, so Niku, right. Shoku, K, Josie are the carnivore girls. Yes. So what do they do? Are they right, just so hyper horny girls? No, these are gu- these are all guys. These are all terms for men. No, so, that says carnivore girls right there. <laughs> what? It says shy guys who don't make a move pray for the growing number of Niku, Shoku, K, Josie, oh, oh, which oh, is carnivore okay. girls. I was looking at so a different So I'm part, saying, right? are there girls yeah. in this magical so society they, that are just hyper horny? When they describe <laughs> themselves as carnivores, yeah, it's it's people who are just out and getting getting laid, getting dates, all that shit. Okay. Uh, so then there's then there's Roryu, Roru Kia Betsu Danchi, which is roll cabbage guys. Oh, Roru roll. <laughs> Guys who appear to be herbivores but are actually carnivore to the core. So that's that's probably like your stalker fucking like, you know, oh, I, I'm a, I'm nice a feminist. Guy. I respect women. I'm a Male nice feminist, guy. And yeah. then they're actually. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, they have them over there, too. That's cool. Then there's Asu, Asupara <laughs> cool, Bacon yeah. Maki Danshi. Asupara Bacon Maki Dashi. Danchi, which is bacon wrapped asparagus, guys. These are so elaborate. <laughs> they smell like this. <laughs> guys, guys. Oh, this is the this is the opposite. Guys who come across as carnivores but are later revealed to be herbivores. So these are the guys who like if they take you out on a date, they're too like they won't kiss you. They won't try to get in there. They'll they're, they're too shy. They won't hold your hand. They try, but they they don't make any moves. That's a shame because uh, that's a, the one that sounds uh, the tastiest. <laughs> <laughs> Then there's uh, Zashoku Ke Zasho. Ah, this is hard. Zashoku Ke Danshi, which is omnivorous guys, guys who do whatever. And Zashoku Ke Danshi, or Zashoku Ke Danshi. Ah, I keep tying tongue tying myself. Ugh. Which is fasting guys, guys with no interest in women at all. There you go. Uh, okay. Fuck man, these are those are hard terms even then. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, but you said you said most of the population of Japan at the moment was those fasting guys, the people with zero interest in women. So, what, where did these other guys come from? Not most of them, apparently, according to this thing, uh, in Japan in 2014, one mil- million babies were born and 1.2 million people died. So they're on a decline. Yeah. Their population. So they're have a, they're having a problem with just young people not fucking and yeah, calling they, them uh, they have, they, they have it, sa- media. it sounds like most of the girls are carnivores though so would no, you think it'd no, be no, easier no. for guys from over here to go over to japan and just fuck around like just show these other uh herbivores how to do it you know maybe you just discovered why i want to go to japan <laughs> a fuck rampage yeah a fuck streak um <laughs> I, I you'll guess. be a nikoshuku I, I think... kidanshi I, th- I think it's nickname. also, yeah, call me that. Nikushoku Ke Danshi. Call me that, everyone. I'll take it. Um, I think the whole thing, though, is that Japan's sex culture is also not nearly as celebrated and open as America's or a lot of the Western world's. I mean, I mean, Japan barely... That's because they keep relating it all to food and shit. Like fucking roll <laughs> cabbage yeah, and yeah. Every, bacon wrapped asparagus. Every, everyone wants to fuck and then they get so hungry they just eat instead. <laughs> Are you a watermelon like a or a nacho? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to oh, fuck sorry. anymore. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm hyping ha- yourself up in the mirror. I'm a jalapeno <laughs> the hamburger. We can't, we can't do it. I'm looking for a quesadilla. I'm sorry. Uh, you're a marshmallow. Uh, maybe if you got two tamales and a, an ice cream scoop, I could try. But uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's I mean, Japanese sex, cul- sex culture is just super repressive and I don't know. There's there's this whole identity thing they have where it's hard for them to get together and get motivated to date and fuck and have babies. Because also the way that their lives operate the is horror. very sing. <laughs> yeah, the way that they operate is their lives are also very singularly focused. It's like you go to school, you get put in a in a placement for what you're going to do. You work at a single company your whole life. You get a wife, you have kids, then you just sit in a house until you die. And it's like there's a lot of now in modern Japan, a lot of people fighting out against that where it's like, well, I don't want to do that. 
I want to, you know, I want to be creative. There's a um, a long term saying in Japan that's the the nail that stands up gets hammered down. And it, it's just you're going against literal, <laughs> literal <laughs> thousands of years. It's everywhere. The greasy wheel yeah, gets the everywhere. grease. Well, what a squeaky wheel gets to grease, isn't that the same thing? Well, that's the that's the mm-hmm. exact opposite. If you if you use that American saying, that's if you're loud and you make a scene, you'll get special treatment. But in Japan, it's if you're loud and stand out, you'll just get filed into place and t- talked down to and told to stick in line uh, and not stand okay. out. Yeah, right. that's that's the whole hammering down the nails. So you have a culture that's literally thousands of years old and just has been indoctrinated in this philosophy of you are part of a big a big collective you are you are just a number in a machine you are not special you you have your job and you stick to it so part of that whole sex thing you know some people are like it's so oppressive and hard and oh i'm just forcing myself to go out and meet women and date and fuck they don't want to do it it's just too See, much i feel like if if there was that kind of like uh ingrained pressure in the society where you're just doing one thing constantly or you're like you're being pushed down and oppressed or whatever you'd be like a ticking sex bomb that's ready to explode <laughs> and just fuck whatever's well, moving next to you that's part of why their porn is so fucked up because they have censorship laws and all this repression on their sex but then it's like well i gotta jerk yeah, off to exactly. something so why isn't why isn't the main like why aren't they fucking each other that doesn't really explain because it's way easier the lack of sex between them well it's way easier to I go guess. home and jack yeah, off to porn than it is to try to get a date and find someone who interests you and go out with them and blah, blah 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 plus i mean i i read in a i read on a thing about a um there was a guy who was as i talked about earlier hikikomori just a shut-in and at one point they were talking about you know he had a girlfriend but he broke up with her when he became a shut-in and he they were like why and he was like well one of the things is every time i want to have sex it's either in our parents, my parents' house or her parents' house. And when you live in a Japanese style home with literal paper thin walls and maybe one and a half rooms, uh, it's pretty hard to get privacy and actually start fucking and being romantic. So what do you do? Mm-hmm. That's why Japan has love hotels. So teenagers can literally leave out of the house just to go have somewhere to fuck. It, it's, it's it's sad. Their I feel sex like you've done more research very... that I'm comfortable with on Japan. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. In, in prepping to go, I watched a bunch of... I learned a bunch. I watched where, a bunch of shit on it. Where do I go if I want to fuck teenagers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta be prepared. Japan. If you're, if you're gonna stay in a, in a foreign place, I mean, at least I believe you should at least know yeah, some of the culture. you gotta know who you can fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who's down? Who's What buildings can I look at in Japan and go, that's where I can get some sex? Let's go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're you're talking uh, about privacy. Oh. Go ahead. I was just gonna. I, I didn't really have anything express. else to say. Yeah, go ahead. Talking about privacy, Andrew. Oh yeah, wow, perfect. Talking about privacy, <laughs> huh? Look, I don't. I don't give a fuck. Any of you out there listening right now, whether you're in Japan or America. Britain, Australia, Germany, some other country, it doesn't matter. There are things that you should care about, such as privacy and securing your data and making sure you can go online without all sorts of nasty little stuff creeping into your connection. That's why you should check out ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN doesn't just encrypt your data while you surf the internet. It even lets you stream and access content that would normally be blocked in your country. Basically, surf the web how you want without having to worry where you are when you do it. Watch Express any VPN porn. Runs, yes, any porn, I have to any do Netflix. this in Turkey. I'm sorry you know, to interrupt, you know what? but I'm gonna, I feel no, personal no, no, I'm gonna, about this. Uh, go ahead. No, no I'm going to shut my mouth and I'm going to let you go because, Kaya, I know that you definitely have the most experience with ExpressVPN. You love ExpressVPN. Yeah, I do, go ahead. because every time I go, go, go to ahead. Turkey... I type it I, because I forget about it. I, I'm used to being, you know, not as repressed. And st- I type in Wikipedia. Oh, it's blocked. Hmm. I type in Pornhub.com. I type in Xamster. I type in YouPorn. I type in whatever the fuck. And it's all blocked. It's insane. But then I can simply turn on my Express VPN app, which is on the PC and Mac and your phone and Android. That's one of the nice things about ExpressVPN. You can literally just ex- install the app and then you can hit a button that just 
uh, starts it and that's it it used to be in the olden days you'd have to go into your computer's dns settings and the proxy settings and then every browser used to have its own proxy settings you don't have to fuck with that shit anymore you can simply install the app you can install it on pc mac android ios doesn't matter just install express vpn and immediately it lets you browse whatever the hell you want to browse under whatever the fucking ip address you want to browse it under if you want to browse porn browse porn you want to protect some of your privacy protect your privacy google just got caught again admitting that if you have one of those home assistant things those voice control things turns out literally anyone oh, can I do literally anyone can listen to those recordings any intern anybody that works with google can apparently just tap into your recordings if you want to protect your privacy with that sort of stuff go to expressvpn.com slash official if they want to hear me jerking off that's up to them <laughs> I'm not gonna stop him. It's fucked up, man. Like, I was playing Worms with a friend and I beat him so hard he said, I'm gonna kill myself. And Alexa immediately gave him a number for a suicide prevention hotline. <laughs> he didn't have to prompt his assistance. This thing is listening all the time. It heard, I'm gonna kill myself and gave him suicide prevention hotlines. This thing is always oh. hot. It's a bug. Oh, we can, we it's can a get surveillance. Into that. It's a surveillance hey, system you put in your own home. You don't want this thing to have your IP, your name, your whatever. Protect your privacy, man. Go to expressvpn.com slash official. Don't let some third world government have your IP address, your name. You don't want the Turkish ISP or whatever knowing what porn you're looking at, man. Expressvpn.com slash official. Stay private. They have a deal for... Uh, you can get three months th free of the yearly plan. But only if you go to expressvpn.com slash official. It's cheap to begin with. I pay for this thing. I love it. So we can uh, we can touch on that topic a little bit because it's something interesting that came up. Uh, Charlie, do you remember when we were at Beefo Brady's eating lunch and we were trying to get Google that was listening to follow our search results based off of our oh. conversation? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this is something that happened to Charlie and I probably like a, a week ago. We we were talking about how Google, just like Alexa, is always listening no matter what through your phone. So we were we were just constantly screaming lawn care, lawn care, lawn care because there was an add on for like lawn care, and I wanted to see if it would do Google. <laughs> Last night, I was in my apartment with my girlfriend, and neither of us could decide what kind of food we wanted, and we were just talking about different restaurants and where to go. And when I opened Google, just not even something I had searched recently. First three recommended things I, I should search. Restaurants, where to eat, what kind of food should I have for dinner? Hmm. Just just always fucking listening. So that's a that's another it, good reason to look into yep. ExpressVPN. That's very interesting then. So did it know that we were testing it with the lawn care? That's fucking terrifying. <laughs> because if it immediately gave you those suggestions based off just a conversation then that must mean it got the context from our conversation where we said we were going to test it with lawn care and it didn't bite. One day you and I should try to test it, but not like talk about it, like wait a week and then just... Yeah, pass notes. Yeah, yeah, meet, meet up on it and just start saying <laughs> buzzwords and see what happens. Like you're hiding from a teacher. Charlie, Andrew, I found two locations near you. Please come in front of the blackboard and read your notes out loud to the class. Mm -hmm. God, that's fucking it's so terrifying. creepy, man. It used to be the government would have to place a van in front of your house and listen in on your bug, your apartment. Now people put the shit in their own houses voluntarily, and they all they have all of it. They have all of it. If you just yell out a slur for fun, well, have fun. It's on the Google service forever, and anyone can listen to it. Fucked up. ExpressVPN.com slash official. Yeah, ExpressVPN. <laughs> Jackson, did you bring a topic today? Uh, cats. It's scary. Oh, it looks like Whoa. shit. Back to you. Oh, yeah. I, my favorite's how they're just aliens with little cat ears on top. They have big bulbous round heads for God knows what reason. It honestly doesn't look too different uh, compared to like the cat in the hat. You remember that from yeah. fucking 2004? Yeah, but even then, yeah, that was bad yeah. too. I mean, I feel like that was better. Like, because it wasn't... I don't know. This is like really weird Uncanny Valley kind of shit, yeah. whereas that yeah. was just obviously Mike Myers in the first suit. So the weird, the weird thing that I don't get is why are they weird alien cat people? Why, why not? I, if you want to be... So here's the thing. If you want to have it be the stage play... If you want to have it be loyal to the original, you know, 
like it was a big fucking musical when it came out. It was a big, big deal. If you want to have it be faithful to that, just have people in costumes. And if you want to have it be animated, make it a, either a cartoon or like a 3D animated movie like Shrek or something. Why do you have to have this weird in between gray area where it just looks really awkward and like shit? God awful. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just put Mike Myers in a fursuit and let him go wild. Exactly. <laughs> He's not doing anything anymore. Exactly. I, want to, I want to see how well that movie does. I want to see how imagine big the it f- can't. It ca- this was there any demand for it? I feel no. Who was asking for cash? Can you imagine no if they took the budget for that movie, all the money they put in visual effects, and just spend it on practical effects and makeup and costumes? How cool it actually could look, instead of just how jarring and awful it looks now. But still, who the fuck was asking for it? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. What, what do you want to say? It's like if you made a movie where every character was a foot. And it's just made for foot fetishists. And it's... I want to see how so much money this Tarantino. makes. It's, it's going to be a, basically a poll, a demographic poll on America to see how many furries there are nationwide that like this shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. Furries. <laughs> furries didn't like it. It's really? on Candy Valley. Oh, it, it's... Yeah. F- yeah. Uh, it's different for all of them, but from what I was reading is they didn't like how it either A, wasn't anthropomorphized enough, <laughs> or B, just how gross it looked in general. <laughs> like, it looked like... It looked like this weird <laughs> hybrid of like furries. Was, it was furries, two ant furries. furries usually either go to two categories. They either want like actual full animals, like Lion King and all the <laughs> Disney movies, or they want or they want anime. Oh, oh, you know what it was? It's because the artist didn't render the cat buttholes or cocks or anything. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't see that, so they, the furries weren't into it. So th- but, their um, complaint is that this was too human. <laughs> basically yeah. well, some, so, of, some of them but uh, Kaya it's kind of like the characters look like you remember the sheep that got born with like a human face I, I so they saw, killed it it yeah. looks like that sheep <laughs> it looks terrible <laughs> it, it does it does it, it looks terrifying it's it looks like terrible it. I hate it. it's one at of those clips the day, at the end of the day furries want cartoons they want they want cartoony characters that in a real physical space probably can't exist or can't look good so when you try to make them look realistic they just look fucking horrifying and terrible but this is it looks realistic though that's the problem so if some scientist came up with a method to grow hair on humans and turn them into actual animals or something (laughs) this is what it will look like this is the closest that furries will ever get to being real animals this is what it will look like a hundred years from now when the science is advanced enough and they don't like it this is the best you're getting idiots this is why you got to go to the route of if you want it realistic, you just go cat girls. Just just slap a cat tail and cat ears on a girl and boom. Oh, wow. Just okay, perfect. that's just perfect. that's just my perfect. Halle Berry Catwoman fantasy. That's not yeah, very shit. That's, that's so. Why do we have to mess with perfection? I understand in cartoons and animation, fine. Judy Hopps, the hottest thing in the world. I get it. <laughs> but but if we're talking real life, just take a hot chick or an anime chick or what the fuck ever you're doing. Slap a yeah, fucking real life anime. <laughs> yeah. Slap a fucking cat ears and a cat tail on her or bunny ears, bunny tail or dog ears, dog, whatever you want. Whatever you think's it's cute. Just and it's just access. Yeah, it's just accessories. And it still looks hot. Still looks cute. Done. Why you got to make this creepy <laughs> otherworldly shit? This alien this- garbage. There's uh, like a a little section in the trailer at about one minutes and 11 seconds, if anyone wants to have a look at some point, where it's Ian McKellen, who I I can't believe he's in this fucking movie. Stop (laughs) stop trying to make Ian McKellen do this fucking weird shit. He doesn't deserve it. And he's turning around with his fucking cat face and it kind of pops out because the technology just isn't there for this fucking movie. It it just looks so bad. Oh, my God. It's just so fucked. I just, I just, ugh. the problem though, and we, I think we talked about this on a previous episode, is that movies like this, while they do have the potential to flop massively, if they're a success, they make fucking literal billions. Like, remember uh, Snow White and the Huntsman? It's made over a billion dollars no one wanted. This Lion King's probably going to make a mm-hmm. dick load Whoa. of money. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that claim. Is that accurate? Snow White and the Huntsman? I thought that was like a universally acclaimed flop. Uh, Snow White and the Huntsman made four hundred million dollars. That's, that's a little under a yeah. billion, Andrew. Maybe yeah. I'm maybe I'm thinking. Well, still, that's four times its budget. That's still a lot. Yeah, that's still good. Yeah, yeah and there's another one. It's good. like one of the top so ten far. grossing movies of all time. That's very similar to it. But either still, like the problem is that yeah, these movies can flop and cost a shitload of money and fail. But when they succeed because of the international box office, they make a dick load of money. So they just keep getting made. That's the problem. I mean, is there a lot of the international thing. like 
are the Chinese really pent up for cat humans? Yeah. Yeah, actually, the Chinese love how Disney's remaking a bunch of stuff now, and they, uh, they go ape shit Disney. over it. Yeah. Well, still, it's the same it? vein of kind of you take a classic thing and you make it 3D CGI. Like, remember remember the Warcraft movie that was a big failure that everyone hated? That thing exploded in China. People went ape shit over it. I guess, yeah. Made huge amounts of money in China. Same, I think Cats is a little different, though. Cats isn't going to do well overseas because uh, you know, China is super against like anything that Cats kind of represents. Yeah, but cats, at the same right? time, it's got musical numbers, and anything with music translates internationally very well. So does it? Yeah, music is one of the easiest ways to get an international audience because even if you don't speak the language, you can get into the song. That's not true. There's no music or anything in Transformers, and that does really well in China. Well, that's for different reasons. Oh, yeah. That's because that's just because people want to go to the theater and go, "Whoa, look, giant robots!" And you don't need to speak English to understand. And no one's going to do that fight. about cats, though. No one's going to go. Let's true. go to the movies to see Ian McKellen dressed up as a cat. Yeah, I'm but not it's trying to goofy. The movie. It's it anime totally... enough. It, it's cat yeah. humans, isn't cat girls a big trope in anime? Yeah, I'm not trying mm, to defend actually, the movie yeah, at all. Point. It looks like complete and utter shit and very well could flop, but I'm just trying to give reasons why it might actually succeed. Who knows? Well, I, I guess we'll see it when it comes out. It'll be interesting to follow. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> of course you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if it's just some like masterpiece and we just don't know it yet. Oh, here's yeah. here's another I'll one in that uh, real silly. in that same vein. Did you guys see that they fixed Sonic? For the new Sonic yeah. movie, they said he's finished. I want I want your guys' oh, opinions on this. Do you think they should have left him alone and just put out a really stinky, funny, bad movie? Or do you think I absolutely think they should have left him alone, unless their new design is even worse? <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> it, it's just Juke, it's just uh, Jim Carrey in a full blue bodysuit. <laughs> yeah, Andy Circus mo capping it. <laughs> they just they just decide let's My... pull up the curtain. It's Andy Circus as Sonic. <laughs> My point was always, like, I don't understand why they bothered fixing it when nearly every single person making fun of it is not going to be their target audience. They're not going to be the ones oh, going yeah. to watch it, even if they do fix Sonic. It's just memes on the internet. And also, there, so, there's no way it's going to yeah. be good. There's no way it's going to be even a good movie, even if they fix the character. So. Uh, yeah, they looked really bad, even without the shitty character. <laughs> we got another? Or a quiz show? What's up? Yeah, the Suquish show. Okay. We're at an hour and ten minutes. Also, just fair warning, it is now pouring <coughs> rain outside, so if you hear that on the mic, there's not a lot I can do. Uh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, we got the thing, uh, quiz show, the things you like corner. We have no voicemails this week. I have an excuse for that, actually. Charlie, it's not directly your fault, but the way I like to prepare for the show is I like to do it either the day or the day before the show, so everything is fresh in my mind, so I was thinking... Charlie mentioned that guy who made an hour-long video about him last week. This is gonna be good. That could be funny. I could clip that shit. I was tenting my fingers like Mr. Burns, like, excellent. I was ready to watch that <laughs> shit. Charlie was the most unclippable, boring. I've watched CBS t town halls with more action than that. So hey Kaya, don't bring that up. Kaya, him and him and that dude are now friends on Twitter from what I saw. They yeah, made up we squashed the beef replies. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's so, so, so anyway, Fuck. back to that, back to that spineless fucking loser that he was talking about. Still a creepy, boring guy. He keeps squabbling with his wife throughout the video, like he's about to beat her. It's really fucking boring. Holy shit! So no voicemails. Uh, but we do have the quiz show. And is everybody ready for this one? I'm mm. ready. Let's Okey do it. Dokey. Here we go. This is Andrew's clip. Once again. Oh, Pokemon. Charlie got it. Oh. Now, Charlie, you got a point. You get a bonus point if you can tell me specifically what instance of Pokemon is that from? A battle. battle. No, 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 no. I mean, like, what what thing from Pokemon? What game? What no, 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 where, where would you, yeah, oh. where would you hear that? Uh, Elite oh, that, Four. No, 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 that's a gym battle. No, sorry, that is a regular, tr that is a regular battle in the anime. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so Charlie Steve gets one gets point. point. You'll have yep. to write that down. I don't have my sheet open here. Oh boy, that was from the anime. Yeah, that's from that is from the anime. It's it's technically the regular battle music in the game, but that specific version is what they played in the old anime. Sounds very video gamey. It's a good cover. 
Uh, so yeah, Charlie got the point for this week, so we can add that mm-hmm. whenever. Good stuff. Are we going to be able to cash out these points at some point for something? Uh, yeah, by season like three, Dave by, our, by our three-year anniversary, let's do something with it. I don't know what. Yeah, king of points I'm gets gonna, something. I'm, Whoever wins buys the rest of us around. From sucking up to the guests who then <laughs> give me points. I always love games like that, Kaya, where the winner just has to do something for everyone else. It's always nice because <laughs> you get to win, but then everyone else gets a treat. So what, what a good time. Love that you. If, I, if I win, I want to get <laughs> Yeah, that's fucking lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all, I only propose that because I'm losing. <laughs> I don't care. <clears throat> winner leaves the podcast. Dick came up with a good card game uh, to counter. What is that card? Bad human. What is that one shitty card game? Shitty humans? Something? Uh, Cards yeah, Against Humanity. Cards against, yeah. Yeah. Dick came up with a game called Winner's Drink, where you only get to drink if you win. To me, that makes much more sense, personally. I feel like that that is logical. Okay, time for the things we like corner. There we go. Jingle. Of course. They oh, might seem like cynical dicks, so they're going to throw this into the mix. Just so you don't think they're dead inside, it's the things we like corner. Right, let's roll. Alrighty, for mine this week, I'm going to give a little shout out to a little known actor. I, I doubt many people know of him anymore. His name is Leslie Nielsen. He's my favorite <laughs> actor of all time. It's I still feel sad that he died. I mean, he was old. It was it was nine years ago, and he was he, really he was old, a great. Yeah. yeah, he was a great comic actor from um, the early early nineties, late eighties, I believe. He did Airplane, Naked Gun, etc. A lot of movies like that. Loved him. He was he, he reminds me of my grandfather and I want him back. It's a very Buzzing good choice. Wilson. It's a very, very good choice. That is a good choice. Uh, my pick for this week mm-hmm. is a, a little series on Netflix called Wild Wild Country. It is about a guy in India who is a big ass cult leader. And there's a whole bunch of shady shit going down because he's leading his cult and he has people like from America flying in there to join it and all this stuff. So one day he goes, you know what? The Indian police, they want to arrest me and all this shit. So we're, we're going to go to America. Bye. And he just uh, well, overnight just up and packs up his whole congregation and just goes to Oregon. And it's a it's a true story. It all really happened. And he gets like thousands of followers to just build him a city in the fucking Oregon out in the plains of Oregon and they uh, they go through loopholes in the government like apparently in Oregon if you have over 300 people gathered together you can legally apply to be a city so their fucking cult congregation becomes a literal city in the state of Oregon and just all this shit keeps happening and keeps getting more and more like stakes keep getting higher and higher and higher it's very very interesting watch it's all on Netflix and I really like it yeah Charlie uh, I don't think we've shouted out Beef O'Brady's, but I like Beef O'Brady's. It's where Andrew are and I go. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Is this just because you guys are talking about Beef O'Brady's <laughs> before we when ate there today. Andrew brought up the lawnmower? <laughs> we yeah, ate we, there earlier today. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, we go there like after workouts almost every time. Yeah. It's just okay. consistent good food, got all the macros you need after a workout. It's located right next to a Smoothie King, which is also bomb. <laughs> it's just real nice. <laughs> Charlie's things we like corner has become what he had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It's, what was it last no, week? I, yeah, I it's think a good that's, lunch. I think it's a good choice. We eat there often enough. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, I fuck hard with beefs. Beefy bees, baby. It's a good restaurant. Meat is good. Kaya. Fuck all objections. Uh, my thing I like is an update on last week because I don't want to be a phony. So as you guys know, On Earth, there are idiots, there are normal people, and there are geniuses. And sometimes geniuses discover stuff at the same time. Like, I looked this up, Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace both discovered evolution at the same time. Oxygen was discovered by Joseph Priestley in Wiltshire and by Carl Wilhelm Scheele in Uppsala, which is in Sweden. I discovered that if you mix red wine with Coca-Cola, it makes for a good drink. Turns out this is already a thing since the 1970s. It's called Kalimocho. 
According to Wikipedia, this is a drink consisting of equal parts of red wine and cola-based soft drink. Dating from the 1970s, it has become an icon of Basque culture. So I just want to put that out there. I'm not claiming to be the genius behind this invention, even though I am still a pioneer behind drinking. I, what what I is believe. Basque culture? What is Basque culture? It's like these mountain people in Spain or France or someplace. Who cares? They're drunks. And uh, they mixed gotcha. wine with Coca-Cola at some points. They also liked adding a dash of ouzo. I tried it. I liked it. So I want to reiterate that. People have been texting me <laughs> since last week asking, so how do I mix this thing? Adjust to taste. Half part red wine, half part, uh, half part Coca-Cola. I like the Coca-Cola vanilla. You can add Uzo, which is very closely related to our Turkish rakı. You can also do that, which is based on dried grapes. I'm actually about to attempt to make my own rakı. So try that. Yeah, that's my update there. My little disclosure. Alrighty. All right. Uh, oh, let me just fuck someone here over it. Netflix doesn't have a number, I'm sorry, but if you would like to see Net, uh, Heart Turbo Greenlit, hashtag Heart Turbo on Netflix, please call 585-612-1388 and tell them all about Heart Turbo, why you would like to see it on Netflix, your ideas for Heart Turbo, give Charlie and me some ideas. If you have, I don't know, uh, some sort of a storyline, some sort of a pilot idea, a script, it doesn't matter if your idea is If you have 30 some of long. our uh, pitch material done, if you've maybe done an animation in your own time and <laughs> want to send us that, <laughs> if deliver that pitch for them. <laughs> if you are an animator, a, a professional speaker, a script writer, please call 585-612-1388 and let us know. Tell us all about your ideas for Heart Turbo, hashtag Heart Turbo on Netflix. You can also go to patreon.com slash the official podcast to be the first person to ever see the Heart Turbo pilots and listen to the intro music. Isn't that right, Charlie? That is correct. Damn. All right. Oh, before before we leave, uh, I remember vaguely on last week's episode at the end that there was a competition between me and Charlie for talking time. Yeah, oh. I forgot. Oh, He's <laughs> okay. Okay. I assume so you, you should. Uh, <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> you, you should analyze analyze that episode and this one, and give us a grand finale next episode on who won. Okay, I was hoping that you guys would just forget, but all right. <laughs> no, I didn't until then. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.